A local family has been grieving two years and counting after the death of the husband and father, Troy Good. Yeah. Good died after being hogtied by South Haven police two years ago today. The outcome will be decided when a trial surrounding Good's death begins in July of 2018. South Haven police believe Good's cause of death was LSD toxicity. When I first started to make the video about if it was possible to die from an LSD overdose, I initially wanted to just make a video to figure out if it was possible. It wasn't. And it became much more when I read into the stories of Troy Good and Bailey Gatlin. Troy was a father. He was having a really bad acid trip and was hogtied by police and ended up dying from suffocation. Bailey was a young girl who enjoyed going to festivals and ended up taking the wrong thing. And in both cases, the claim was they died from LSD toxicity. I just, for whatever reason, connected with both their stories. Maybe because I just know that that could have easily been me. I promised myself I would stay up to date with their cases, and I have. There's been a lot of new information that's come out. And I recommend watching the first video if you haven't. You can click the top right of your screen now. Yeah, this is an update to the story of Troy Good and Bailey Gatlin. The wrongful death lawsuit, that court date has been set against the city of South Haven as well as the police department here, the fire department, doctors, and emergency personnel. But the family and friends tell me that with every passing day, they still have hope while they continue to fight for justice. It's a video Andrew Kratzky has seen before and then tried to delete from his memory. The day his boyhood best friend, Troy Good, died after being hogtied by South Haven police. Going on day by day, uh, see how the family's doing, um, make sure that they're uh, happy and healthy. He tells me the family is doing the best it can. Although they cannot legally speak to the media because of a gag order, Kratzky says the past 730 days have been hard and frustrating for everyone. So right now, it's, um, it's absolutely frustrating. But at the same time, it's just, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. We have to uh, wait and see what the final outcome will be. That news report was aired in July of 2017. Now, six months later, the family of Troy Good are stuck waiting for answers. Troy's cause of death stands as LSD toxicity, even though his autopsy showed that couldn't have been the case. There's been multiple extensions of Troy's case, as well as a relocation of the actual trial, which has been frustrating for the family. Not only have they been without a member of their family for almost three years, they also have had to live with the fact so many people were involved in the event of his death and no one seemed to care or do their job correctly. Also, they were forced to sign a gag order so they can't speak on the case. But I didn't sign shit. His story has always infuriated me. I understand a person freaking out and screaming is scary, especially as a police officer who has no idea what this guy's on or what his intentions are. Like, trust me, I get that. But to have been tasered, bitten by a dog, hogtied, all while having severe asthma and having a really bad acid trip for simply opening a door is fucking ridiculous. This is, this is no longer a documentary where I'm just gonna talk about the facts. I'm not going to tiptoe around what happened and how I feel about it, and to this day I'm still fucking pissed off that this man's son has to grow up without a father because so many people did their job horribly. Troy's trial is set to begin in July of 2018, and just know I will be covering it here the entire time. Much love and good energy to the family of Troy. I know you guys can't say anything, so I will. When it comes to the story of Bailey Gatlin, there's been a lot of new information that's come out since the first video I made. Initially, the San Luis Obispo County Coroner's Office, actually Dr. Gary Walter in particular, who I'll be making a full expose on in the future, reported Bailey died from LSD toxicity. Only four months later, after facing public scrutiny, a corrected version of the autopsy was released, claiming it was actually multi-organ failure, hyperthermia, and dehydration that were the causes of her death. Turns out the source I spoke with was correct and Bailey did ingest what was claimed to be LSD inside of a gummy bear. A sample of those actual gummy bears was tested and it was shown to have only pure LSD in them. 
Initially, most reports, including mine, said this was probably another NBOME type overdose. But Bailey's blood was tested for not only NBOME type drugs, but MDMA, and both came back negative. That's according to the Sheriff's Department, but I couldn't find anything in the autopsy report showing that they tested for either one, which is weird. So what happened to Bailey? What's the truth? Being that the autopsy was performed by such a controversial and incompetent doctor like Gary Walter, it's hard to say at this point. I mean, who knows how truthful the correction was? Who knows if the testing was done correctly? Only months before this, Gary Walter was arrested for DUI after crashing into a parked car. He was over twice the legal limit, and he was on his way to work. If it was me, I'd be totally concerned with how legitimate the work on my loved one was. So for now, Bailey's family is left unsure. From what I found, there have been no legal proceedings for Bailey's death. And Bailey's family is left knowing an incompetent doctor could have not only misdiagnosed their family member's death, but possibly not have done the correct job when truly trying to find out what caused it. All I can say is much love and good energy to the family of Bailey. If her family chooses not to go forward with legal proceedings in the future, then this would technically be the conclusion of her story. And I respect that. I feel like the best thing I could do is just share their story. Do my best to share information about testing your drugs, how important it is. You can even buy test kits online now. Check the description. There's a link right there where you can get some. They have them on Amazon, everywhere. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.